Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I'll be drinking the Double, Double Mountain 15 Funky Red Sister, which is a Flanders Red. So this is my first Flanders Red here. Uh, note on the bottle says, For our 15th anniversary, we bring you a Flanders Red Style Beer brewed in 2019. So this is a three-year-old beer. Fermented on Britannomyces and aged in a combination of New American Oak and former Devils and Tahoma Creek casks. What makes a Flanders red different from a like the the, the red or amber ale, the, the hopped amber like a Rubens Meta Modern or um, Double Mountain Zone IRA? Uh, so the red ales are uh, typically an ale using a darker a, a more roasted uh, malt and so they're an amber or red in color but they're still characteristically just a regular ale uh, the Flanders red is a Belgian style um, so it's not going to be nearly so hopped uh, in fact historically Belgian brewers used um, things like other herbs and such to mask or minimize or delay spoilage and such besides just hops. Uh, so traditionally Belgian beers are very low bitterness and um, red, uh, Flanders red ales are also often mixed. Um, there's a brewery called Petrus, or I don't, I don't know if that's the brewery or the brand, but there's um, the Petrus aged red uh, is a really delicious uh, blend of brown and red ales that I really enjoy. It's quite sweet. Uh, it's kind of a special occasion beer that I really enjoy. Um, but so this should be in that style. I'm expecting this to be juicy, uh, possibly tart on the side of cherry. Oh, duh, crike, cherry. Crike is cherry, right? Um, so it'd be a cherry beer barrel. So yeah, I definitely expect this to have um, cherry notes. A fresh cherry rather than dried, um, brighter rather than darker cherry. Um, also, this is technically a sour, so it'll have those more sour notes. But one thing I've noticed, so there are sour beers, like sour ales that are actually puckeringly tart. And there are, then there are more traditional sour ales, which are only sour in comparison. So they aren't, you know, hoppy or um, or sweet, but they are. They tend to be fruity and more, more like small stone fruit flavors. So cherry is very common, um, and and so it's not really tartness that you're looking for. It's more this nice sour juiciness that you're expecting. And this being a, a Flanders red style, that's generally what I'm going to expect this to be. So this is a seven percent ABV and a five bittering units. That's very low bittering units. So yes, I'm expecting this to be very much not a, a, a bitter, a hopped bitter beer. I'm expecting it to be juicy, and um, I'm expecting it to be pretty darn good, especially considering what I've seen of Double Mountain so far. So let's open it up. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Just the, just the expulsion of gas from, from just opening it up uh, released a lot of some, some kind of interesting uh, floral and cherry notes. So let's pour it out. Hmm. It's almost a, a soda pop. Like uh, um, the, 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 the head I'm, I saw in here. It's uh, tea brown. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely brown, not red, but that's it's a matter of degrees, <laughs> especially when you're dealing with beer. Ooh, okay, so this has some tartness to it. Interesting. Um, so there's both fresh cherry and dried cherry in here, but not not like you know thick, uh, sweet dried cherry, but tart um, like freeze dried cherries. There's also some acidity. Interesting. Um, maybe the pits, uh, like like 
fruit pits. You know how um, a plum or an apricot pit, especially when you break it open, and I don't know if you've done this, but I have, <laughs> it has kind of an acidic um, uh, no, uh, uh, smell to it. And I think that's what I'm picking up. Yeah, it's really, it, it's a, there's a real sharp acidity to this, but it's a really thin, sharp acidity. And then kind of surrounding that is the the cherry, the kind of freeze-dried cherry, and then the the fresh cherry. Um, it's pretty much everything. Some nice mellow sweetness tied into the cherry there. So based on the smell, I'm expecting this to be tartar than I was previously assuming. Um, but we'll see. Uh, it also, so Britannomyces yeast, so that's gonna be kind of a funkiness, a grassiness. I've talked about Britannomyces before. That's a yeast common to a lot of Belgian beers, Saison's. Um, I don't recall if Beer de Garde, the French Beer de Garde has that, but the Belgian Saison definitely has Britannomyces yeast. A lot of wild ales. Um, oh. Uh, lactic. There is uh, lactobacillus. There's lactic acid in here, definitely. Uh, that's when you're dealing with a, a Flemish beer uh, uh, or a, a lot of Belgian beer styles, especially Belgian sours or so Flanders sours, Flemish sours. Um, sorry, the more words I use, the less intelligent I sound. <laughs> um, a lot of the tartness is going to come from lactic acid, which is a common result of a lot of the wild bacteria that will show up in a wild aged beer. Um, and they're, they're good things. You, you want that. They're actually desired qualities in the beer. You want the lactic acid. So that's not a, an off note. That's just how it is, what the beer is. Uh, that's the, the sourness that I'm picking up, that, that tart acidic note. Um, so I'm going to expect this beer to possibly be relatively tart for a Flanders Red. Um, but uh, let's uh, see how she goes. Yep, that's tart. There's a couple different layers going on here though. Um, okay, so there's the tartness and it's kind of a, a mouth-watering tartness. A lot like that Parliament Ghosts that I had where the, the tartness, it was really, it was astringent. Um, but it also made my mouth water, which is kind of fun. Um, a mouth-watering beer. Cool. So there's that tartness here. That's the first thing you get. Then there is this kind of all-around uh, cherry sweetness. And you also have that roasted malt, though. So that's that's really interesting. I'm, I'm In the other Flanders Reds I've had, or the other... Um, Belgian reds I've had. I don't know that I've tasted the malt quite so distinctly as I have in this. And it's not that I missed it in those other beers. It's that it's an interesting, an interesting part of this beer. There's almost a, in the, the, the tart cherry, there's almost like a, a coffee note as well. That's kind of interesting. So there's there's like three or four different uh, distinctive uh, characteristics of this beer, of the flavors going on in this beer. That's that's quite interesting. I like that. <laughs> Trying hard to avoid my pucker face. Let's see if I can just do a natural. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a more natural reaction. <laughs> It's, it is tart, but um, in comparison, say, to the Parliament Peach Ghost, which was also bracingly tart, this has other things going on that make it worth dealing with the tartness. The tartness is part of a broader palette that's going on, a broader set of flavors, and it's, it's not bad. Over, like, all in all, taken in total, that's very pleasant. The part, the tartness goes away pretty quickly. There's almost, 
like you can taste it down your throat, which is a really interesting thing for tartness. Tartness is usually just in your mouth. Um, so I am tasting the tartness still down my throat, uh, but my mouth is, like right now, it's, it's cherry and maybe some milk chocolate and that maltiness. So that's, that's really, that's really interesting. I like that. Um, it's quite, quite an interesting beer. I kind of, the, the recommended serving temp for Flanders Reds, for traditional Flanders Reds, is cellar temperature. So 55 to 60 degrees. Um, I did warm this up because it had been in the fridge. I stuck it under a warm tap for five minutes or so. And it might have gone just over where it ought to have been. So this might be a bit on the warm side. And that might also bring out some of these additional flavors. I would definitely, it'd be interesting to try this um, more chilled. I might stick the bottle back in the fridge as I drink it over the course of the day and see how that changes. Um, I would, But I would expect that to not decrease the tartness. I think it would more decrease the secondary characteristics. And given that the secondary characteristics are so much of what I enjoy in this beer, um, I'm not sure that it would necessarily improve things. It would make it more refreshingly tart though. It would be a simpler beer when it's colder, which is just in general how things are. The, 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 the chilling, a, a chilled thing, your tongue is going to pick up fewer of those flavors. Your taste buds are depressed. Not, oh, woe is me, but as in their, their acuity, their, their ability, their function is, is slowed down and decreased a little bit. And that's normal in, in cold things. That's why when you're making an ice cream base, you have to really over sweeten it for those flavors to show up. It's really easy for a subtle flavor or a delicate flavor to get, it's really easy for subtle flavors to get lost when you're making ice cream because of the, um, because the, the depressing, uh, um, action that the chill that the coldness brings to the beer so or brings to what it what it is that you're chilling um so with this the fact that i'm i'm picking up those those milk chocolate and cherry and and other notes that that really go along very nicely with the with the tartness here i think it's probably best at the room temperature or cellar temperatures but just below room temperature Hmm. Even almost a little bit of black tea, like a, an Earl Grey. That's more, I mean, Earl Grey is more an orange peel, but it also has that black, that, that dark herbaceousness. Um, and and I'm, I might be picking up some of that too. That's overall, okay, I like this beer. This is a very tasty, tart um, Flanders Red, the Funky Red Sister. Double Mountain 15. Uh, definitely worth it. Uh, Double Mountain is a small brewery in Hood River, Oregon. I only stopped by their, their pub and oh, it was hopping um, on a Saturday evening on my way out of town after trying, after spending more of the day at a ferment and full sale. Um, but if you're ever going through Hood River, I and you like your sour beers, <laughs> I recommend dropping by uh, Double Mountain. I don't know how much longer they'll have a three-year-old beer in stock, but um, it'll be worth it if you find it. Uh, anyways, this has been Matthew. I've been chewing the brew, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.